All right, so uh, welcome back to the uh, Nerd to Know Media podcast. My name is Keanu Calicorn, and we are joined by a special guest today or tonight, depending on where you're listening from. Uh, please introduce yourself, sir. Hi, I'm John Paul. I uh, am one of the members of the Anime Lockdown team. Yes, and uh, we are very excited to talk to him because we will be appearing uh, at the Anime Lockdown ourselves. But first, um, were you one of the founding members of the Anime Lockdown then? Yes, this uh, this was an idea that I had about three weeks to a month ago, just seeing all the conventions shutting down, seeing mm. friends that were bummed out mm. about having conventions shutting down. And uh, it just was like a random idea I had one night. I said, hey, what if we have our own convention? <laughs> what, you know, like, what if we just have a couple of panels? Like, we all do panels anyway. Why don't we just talk to our friends, see if they want to present, and uh, see what we can put together. And it got bigger faster than I expected, and so I had to enlist the help of, of some friends. Uh, <laughs> my good friend Tony is talking to vendors, and then uh, my friend Chris is handling all the scheduling. That's excellent. And uh, I must say, I completely understand where you're coming from, because uh, right as all of this kind of shutdown started happening, myself and my fiance Stevie, we had a full, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the show, Mandalorian costume thing ready to go. We had an IG-88 built and a Baby Yoda costume for our baby. So it was crushing when all of that suddenly ground to a halt. So I think it's a brilliant idea that you've come up with this. And I've got to ask, what kind of submissions have you had so far? Uh, you know, I've got the schedule up right now. Um, right we have a few a few panels on Pokemon. Um, we have one on the history of Shonen Jump. We have one that showcases sports anime uh, with the approach that a lot of people don't like sports anime, so this is to convert them, right. presumably. Yeah. Uh, we have a few panels that I haven't announced. We have about five, I believe, five guest panels. Hmm. that I'm going to announce on Friday. Uh, we have an animator showcase. We have one on the anime business. I Forgive me if I get this wrong. Are you guys the one doing the Doki Doki Literature Club panel? That's us. That's us. Just spot us at 20 paces, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a good variety. There's, there's a, Hopefully we have a lot of robot fans because there's a lot of robot panels. Right. <laughs> there might be four or five. The Gundam base. <laughs> Yeah. There is a Gundam <laughs> panel. There had to be. It, w it wouldn't yeah. be a con without uh, an over-representation of Gundam anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly with anime. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, funnily enough, before we started recording, actually, uh, we were talking about kind of foot traffic and kind of getting people interested and turning up and all that kind of stuff. But how, compared to, say, hypothetically, just inviting people to a convention in a building somewhere, what has been your approach to getting people excited to attend an online con, if you know what I mean. Mostly just not shutting up on <laughs> social media. Yeah, you're, That's you're really social... been the key. Yeah, you guys are very, very active on social media. Like our um You crossed an ocean. That's true. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> Lisa who does the panel uh, who does the in the Pokemon panel and she does uh, yeah. Shadow Canto here, she's like, Oh my god guys, you gotta apply for this and we're like, What's yeah, this? Yeah. So yeah, like you re you reached over you know international waters and time zones to uh yeah. to bring us in so that's amazing i have to say you know when it was announced my first thought was that's a brilliant idea i can't believe no one came up with it first yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah. You. so fair play because it's like yeah. as keen said like the reason why you had the mandalorian stuff ready to go was because we were supposed to be doing a panel at dublin comic-con the yeah. day that everything kind of shut down yeah literally uh, so i i, I do want to make something clear we're not the first people to do this uh, I don't want to take any credit for that. Mm. Uh, there was actually an anime convention uh, about a month ago called OnCon. This weekend, uh, there's going to be one called QuarantCon. We're just allowed <laughs> uh, Fair. online presence. Fair. Uh, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, uh, misrepresent that. Yeah. Well, perhaps not. But you are certainly yeah, I, the yeah. only one. We have been looking actively, we have, and yeah. you're the you're, you're the only one that's come think, up on our radar. Certainly, in Ireland, so you're no, the yeah. one that kind of hit us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, as you said, look, you might you might not be the first guys to come up, but you're definitely the most successful. So you know, yeah, <laughs> I hope so. It is what it is. Well, we hope so too. You know, we're excited to. Um, well, one, I didn't expect to get a response from you, so thank mm. you for that. <laughs> um, and you know, we're all very excited to kind of see how it works because you know 
the way we do the show here is over Zoom anyway, so it's kind of strange. It's not it's not anything different for us, but you know, doing a panel to in a different way, it's it, it's a unique experience which we didn't think we'd be yeah. doing. You know. Mm-hmm. And uh, can I ask, has there been any surprising challenges? I know you've you've said off the air that you've got a lot of radio experience, but has there been any surprising challenge about organizing this so far? That uh, keeping my anxiety in check right. has been a big challenge. Uh, especially once we started talking to guests. Uh, there's, okay. There's a there's a few uh, things that I'm going to announce that I never never imagined were going to happen, and uh, it it took a, a while to calm down from that. Like, okay, now now this is real. There's no turning yeah, back. Yeah. This has to happen. We can't mess it up. Mm. Um, you know, it's we've been talking about it for weeks now. Uh, that's really the biggest challenge because like other than that it's it's sending emails it's pushing buttons mm. um and i, I suppose up. sorry to cut across you there but i'm going to ask you a normie question sure. why why an anime convention if it could hypothetically be anything why a convention on anime why did that jump out at you uh, just that's what i've always attended uh i've been an anime fan for a long time mm. uh every year i would go to this anime convention in minnesota called Anime Detour, and then I moved to New York, and so now I'm going to the East Coast conventions like Anime NYC, Otakon, Anime Next. It's just what I know. Right. Yeah. Um, it's I have more of a specialty in that realm. I could have made it more open, say this is just a geek uh, event, but uh, I think it helps that I also know what a lot of these people are talking about. Yes. While yeah. I'm not an expert, mm. I know what Gundam is. You know, I know what Pokemon <laughs> is. Fair. Whereas if I said, hey, let's do a geek convention and somebody wanted to talk about some obscure book, I wouldn't know if they made that up or if yeah. it's a right. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, and I think you're right to zone in on that because you could have made it broader, but like if it's anime, the waifus will turn up. And like, I think a lot of, <laughs> like at the risk of generalizing, uh, a lot of people who are into anime and the Japanese culture are quite internet savvy. So I think yeah. certainly in this household, we've been looking forward to this for ages. So like, Thank you for giving us something to be excited about during these times. You know, yeah, I'm I'm happy to help. I, I've seen something as well from from obviously going to cons and doing panels and stuff um, at cons. It seems like the anime focused ones are always the more uh, I don't want to say better because you know, but <laughs> definitely definitely the more intense. Like your audience is more kind of like they know what's going on. They're there. They're more receptive. It's uh, tend to have more of a community though. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's... a more community field and a larger one. Like no. And that's what from going to them, you can see, you know, you go to some of the smaller, there is that community base where, you know, as you said, everyone kind of knows what they're talking about and everybody kind of is there to have a good time and share stuff. It's a, it's a good atmosphere. That's why I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how it translates over the internet. I'm sure it's going to be excellent. Like, I, I'd agree with that because uh, I've, I've been to more open geek conventions and part of why I stopped going is because I felt out of place. Yeah. It's like, well, I liked Game of Thrones and I like Doctor Who. But I don't know, like, the... I, I don't even know what crowd to say. There, it, it gets a lot more branched out, whereas an anime, at an anime convention, like, we all at least have... We're all on the same page. We may not like all the same shows, but we're all on the same mm. page. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and, I, and I think you're right, because uh, we've had panels at, uh, so far at the big Comic-Con and then Shurikon and... Um, J-Con. What's the other one, Kev? What that used to be, Ertacon? J-Con. Uh, oh, J-Con. J-Con, yes. And there's such a different feeling. Like, the Comic-Con is fun, but it's like being at Disneyland. It's just crazy and overwhelming. But, like, those more specialized ones, it's, you're right, everyone's kind of on the same page, and there's a nice atmosphere, and you feel like you can just go up and talk to people, and it's not a threatening thing, which is absolutely yeah. lovely, you know? Yeah, when exactly. you focus it on just anime everyone's kind of yeah everyone as you were saying everyone's on the same page plus for the most part anime fans they just know how to get weird so it's all <laughs> it's all out there it's, it's all on the level you know you're standing in a room and there is just a naked woman on a body pillow 10 feet 10 feet above you like, <laughs> well, you're not you holding anyone it. to anything at this point <laughs> no question it. it is like oh that's cool i have uh i have her sister at home <laughs> 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 yeah, it definitely gets gets weird. It's gonna be a little different at, at this because it's online. Yeah, but mm. uh, certainly a lot of the same people are but, gonna but, be. Yeah, yeah. But, but on that point, there, uh, John Paul, it's um, 
what were some of the chat now I've, I've keep i've kept up with your blog where it's the technical side of things where you had to put new ram in your stream and pc and stuff what have some of the challenges been about the actual physical setting of this up like how's how's can you give us the idea how it's going to run or how you're actually streaming it or what's going on uh i mean most of it is just doing tests test right. after test after test uh so early on i did a few twitch tests where i just streamed video for eight hours a day to see if I even had a stable connection. Right. Uh, and when those were all successful, I'm like, okay, cool. I found a bit rate that I'm comfortable with. Uh, so then I stopped thinking about that for a while. And then somebody said, well, what if you stream to Facebook and YouTube? I'm like, yeah. oh, well, that's an idea. What if I do stream to Facebook and YouTube? So I've been testing that out now where I have a restreaming app called Restream where you stream to them, and then they split it up across multiple platforms. Wow. And I was able to successfully run that app for 20 hours straight okay. without any problems. Um, I did learn some interesting things. Uh, so <laughs> Like in the, the 20th hour, it just starts exploding? And oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so each of these platforms has different time limits for how long you mm. can stream. Really? Twitch is 48 hours. YouTube mm. is 12 hours. Facebook is 8 hours. All right. Well, that's mm. going to be a problem because our event runs for, I believe, 14 hours. Mm. Yeah. So the Twitch stream can stay on, but the Facebook and YouTube at some point are going to need to get reset. Right. Mm. Well, people need to know about that. Um, I also uh, did a um, recording test because I'm going to keep a local archive mm. of the video. I wanted to see, is my computer going to blow up if I try to record <laughs> for 20 hours straight? Yeah. Turns out it's fine. And OBS is actually really, really good at this. The second I hit stop recording, I could already watch the file, which was that's incredible. Awesome. Well, that's that, so that's good. amazing. That's better than what, what just happened before we recorded. We had to wait 10 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I was going to say, would you mind sending all this information on to Dara? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would be great. <laughs> um, but also just learning about the different types of software that people want to present with. Learning how to mm. display PowerPoint mm. And make it look attractive on a, on a stream was something that I had to learn how to do. Right. Turns out it's really easy to do. I just didn't know about the sub menus and how to do it. Now I do. Fair. Right. That's um, cool. Learning how to make a programming guide. That's something I did yesterday. I've never designed a magazine before. Now I now I can essentially say that I have. <laughs> look, it, what's it? Necessity is the mother of invention, and that's kind of yeah. like yeah literally what's ha what's happened here you know where this was going to have to people have to learn how to do things you know like and it's it's not just with that it's any kind anything social like even the the program we're using here is you know has taken over the world you know in, in that sense so mm. it's it's crazy you know um but what can people expect as far as what, what are you like most excited for um over the weekend because it's three days so yes um i'm most excited to see how the turnout is honestly like there's a lot of really cool panels i don't want to you know say that i'm looking forward to one more than the other because i don't right. think that's fair to the panelists uh obviously i'm really excited for the guest panels um but i can't announce who they are quite yet mm. um but i just want to see how people receive the event i want to see how the discord goes we're trying something that is very experimental i haven't seen it done a lot we're not the first people to do it i want to make that clear but we have an online dealers room that we're setting up and that is kind of weird. Hmm. It's like um, a trade hall. So I mean, it's it's we're just calling it dealers room because that's the word that we've all agreed upon mm. over the years. But it's it's really a directory for people to uh, talk to these artists and talk to these dealers. Um, and that is what my friend Tony's in charge of. He's he's speaking to God. Last I checked, it was over mm. 40, 40 uh, artists and vendors. Wow. Uh, independent artists and independent vendors. And uh, so people will be able to go into our Discord, talk to these people about what they're selling, and and uh, you know presumably make a transaction, assuming everybody likes what they're selling. That's well, that's a good point to bring up actually, because among our staff, if we can call it that, we have a balloon magician, we have a Pokemon horror expert slash musician. Like, is there still opportunities for people to submit for the dealers hall or anything like that? Uh, you you can. Uh, we are we're gonna be closing that on Friday because it's right. just, it's it's getting to be too big. I don't want to overwhelm people and put like two hundred things in the Discord. Yeah. Um, the way that it's it seemed to settle down, I think that there'll probably be around fifty options for people, which is is still a very very large number. 
Um, but I, I trust Tony to make the right call on who uh, who actually gets approved and whatnot. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Excellent. Um, now, um, sorry, you go on there, Derek. Oh, sorry, go, King, go for it. All right, well, I appreciate you can't tell us about the guests yet because that's going to be announced on Friday, but how was the experience of finding the guests? Did you approach them yourself or did they reach out to you because of the con? Did you, like, are you, have you met anyone that you're especially fond of? What was that process like? It's been a little bit of both. Um, so I really only reached out to one person, and it was an experiment. Right. Mm. Uh, because I didn't, I mean, we're, we're tiny. It's, it's not going to, if, if everything goes as planned and everything runs smoothly and all the panelists show up, it's not going to seem like this was a con run by three dorks. <laughs> it's it's gonna seem bigger than it is um yeah. i think because it just the the um the types of of guests that we have are it blows my mind and most of them reached out to me first wow um hey, that's awesome wow that must have been incredibly humbling it was incredibly terrifying <laughs> 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 oh. that's incredible like, I, I, like it seems like this is a very fluid situation still um and like what's the be like your social media is is on point like it's fantastic w when are we going to be able to see um hard timetables or anything like that as far as um is this going to be after you announce everything on friday is that when i want to post the, the so the plan that i have right now is to post the schedule grid. Uh, I'm sure many people are familiar with that. It's mm. the part of the panel book that's just a uh, Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to post that first. Right. Um, but then on Wednesday, that is when I plan to post the actual panel guidebook, which is going to be, you know, a, a guidebook. It's like a magazine. Mm. It's going to have descriptions. It's going to have panelist contact information, mm. descriptions of the guests. Uh, it's going to list all of the dealers and how to get a hold of them. Uh, but people will know what panels uh, to expect before then. And I have one. I have a follow up on that as well. Um, sure. As far as um, your stream, so from my understanding of it, it's one continuous stream. It's not like when you go to a panel, you go to a con, and there's like different rooms or whatever. It's just on. There's going to be one stream which will be broadcast on different streaming platforms, and that's your one stop that's correct. shop, right? Okay. Yes, and it's because I wanted to simplify things. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, the the setup I have is is complicated to say the least it even confuses my fellow audio engineers and to you're have preaching to the choir. Than... you're preaching to the choir <laughs> i know <laughs> i know <laughs> to have more than one would be cost prohibitive and i don't know who would be able to run it also preaching to the choir uh, yeah. so, <laughs> it is what it is you know but it, that's that's cool you know it's it makes it better for you know for ease of thing but i was just kind of wondering i'm like how how similar to pan to cons actually is it as far as that way where there it stuff is all over the place so to have it in one in one area as much as fun. it can be so the the plan is to have a half hour after every panel okay. of a break mm -hmm. right. and that's one for my own sanity uh, but also so people have time to uh, look at the the dealers mm. to chat with each other to share their cosplay on our Discord Very cool. or you know to use the bathroom or make a sandwich. Mm. Um, I, it it would just it would be impossible to do back to back to back to back. Yeah. Um, oh, we completely understand that. We had to take a break in this very episode to go boil the kettle. Like, so we we are very much <laughs> breaks, you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, what, so uh, for our listeners who maybe aren't uh, aren't aren't familiar with it or aren't sold, when are things kicking off? And there's no cost. This is 100 percent free, right? 100 percent free. Um, I'm not accepting any tips or well, donations. I don't want your money, wow. period. Um, if 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 anybody does ask for money, it's going to be a dealer for what they're selling. That's the amazing. Con itself, Fair no play. money. That's so great. That's awesome, um, dude. Really. Well, even if I wanted to charge people, which is just kind of a personal thing that I'm against, mm. how would I enforce that? It's a Twitch stream. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> yes. point. You know, <laughs> fair no. point. Um, fair point. <laughs> but I also, it's I just I don't think it's fair for me to profit off of everybody else's hard work. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think it's it's a little different when it's a live event because they have to pay for venue costs, they're yeah. paying guest appearance fees, all that kind of stuff. Mm. There has um, to be like a return on investment that's gone yeah, into. Yeah, it, well, so. they have to be able to pay for the venue. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that, at least that you know. 
So, but still, I mean, like you, like irrespective of that, you have put an incredible amount of work into this, and I think that should be recognized. Like, I'm, you know, I'm fine being mostly nameless. That's that's why mm. I made it a separate account and didn't make it a part of my usual mm. projects mm. because right. while this is really fun for me and I'm, uh, you know, ostensibly achieving a lot of goals that I had a long time ago when I started blogging and doing podcasting. Mm. I wanted to make it about the community. I wanted to make it about the panelists. I didn't want to make this about, hey, and by the way, check out my SoundCloud. <laughs> I just, I, Ring that bell. I thought that that would be tacky. Yeah. Um, mm. Of course, panelists can promote you know, their own yeah, blogs, yeah, yeah. et cetera. I can't prohibit people from doing that, but I'm not promoting any of my own personal projects mm. during this. Well, there you go, guys. If you're listening, you know, there's no excuse. <laughs> Go over. It's, it's free. You have nothing else to do during lockdown. Yeah, Come on. It's uh, no May, excuse. May, May 1 through 3. Um, uh, what time's it kicking off at? It's going to start. Uh, I have to figure out exactly when I want opening ceremonies to start, but right. the first panel is at 11 Eastern time a.m. 11 a.m. Mm. Eastern. I'll probably. So I'm going to end up turning the stream on a little early just to give people time to show up. Mm. And mm. then I'll probably pop on about a half hour mm. before all of the programming mm. starts just to. Well, I mean, I've got I've got a lot of bullet points that I need to hit on. Um, sure. I also have a cool surprise for people uh, that show up early. So. Oh, that's mm. tempting. And, <laughs> tell us, and uh, on that note, actually, where until the Twitch comes out uh, on the first, yeah. where is the best place people can follow updates about the anime lockdown? Are you on Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff? Yep, I'm on Twitter and Facebook. I mean, you can add the Twitch now if you want. I'm just not streaming anything. Okay. Uh, it's, it's anime lockdown on Twitch. I believe it's just slash anime lockdown. Mm. It should be the same on Facebook, just slash anime lockdown. But mm. Twitter is the only weird one uh, because anime lockdown was uh, already taken by somebody. Mm. Uh, so it's Anna lockdown con. Um, okay. So. I'm well, the most active on Twitter. Yeah, their Twitter is very active. We'll leave links to everything in the. the the description box of this video and obviously um in the description of the episode as well so jean paul i want to thank you so much for coming on for your time we're really yeah. looking forward to it um it's it's going to be something that we never thought we'd do um <laughs> this summer so yeah. thank you very much again for having us part of it and we appreciate yeah. you joining the show today thank you for having me cheers okay cheers